Learning from others' mistakes is a winning formula. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We're honored that for over 30 years, we've been able to come alongside you, not only selling, buying, and investing in real estate over 3,117 times, but really coming alongside you to build your faith, build your finances, build your fun, build your fitness, and even strengthen and heal inside your relationships. And so this time, we're going to discover Mm -hmm. it's a whole lot easier to start with good habits. Yes, it is. And not have to start with bad habits. Eh, Mm -hmm. Allie? Yes, for sure. And so we've been interviewing Allie, Mm -hmm. hearing about her journey of reading the wealth formula with resistance at the beginning. Yes. And even with resistance, she got a lot out of it. I did. Right? Yes. And so you don't have to have a whole lot of money Mm -hmm. to learn. No, not at all. So what did you learn from around money principles and around life in general that you're going to take with you into the future? Oh, um, I think it's just being careful and le- less about spontaneous and impulsive spending. And that's an issue that I've had a lot is just, I see something I want, so I buy it. And I think it's definitely about control and being able to resist those urges, even if you uh, um, have them. And that's something that I learned and I got from the book a lot is with uh, the characters in the book, they had a lot of those. David wanted to buy TVs and cars, and I really related to him because it was. You like, liked him, didn't I you? I did. You yes, really liked I definitely David. Did. I love that. Yes. Um, but yeah, like I would, I would definitely learn to just slow down a little bit. If I see something I like, think about how how it's going to benefit me in ten years or twenty years. If that pair of shoes that I bought is not going to be worth it, and 10, 20 years, I don't really think it's worth it. And that's that's something that I've only recently started to think of. I never used to think like that. And it was kind of just, if I want something, I want it and I would get it. And Right. Yeah. And we have a story about shoes, don't we? Yes, we that do. That wasn't all that long ago, shortly yeah. before you read the book, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you decided there was a pair of shoes, mm-hmm. Impulsive Alley. Yes. Decided there was, which you're not impulsive anymore. Not In anymore. In the past, you were an impulsive yes. girl. Yes. And now you know more what you want down the road. Mm -hmm. So you're making different decisions. I am. Yeah. My priorities have definitely changed. I don't believe that a pair of shoes that cost $600 would be worth it because I think of it like that. A pair of glasses that help my vision would be 500. So just below that. And I definitely realized that there's, there's value in certain things and the shoes were not, not at the time, yes, they were, and they were nice shoes, but they're know. beautiful. Yeah, I have them here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And I think you were saying to me that if you'd bought a hundred dollar pair of shoes, yeah, it would have it would have been the same. There would be no difference. It would just be a brand mm-hmm. logo. And I think that's something a lot of people don't understand is that brands are very they're pushed, right? They're pushed a lot, and especially towards teenagers. These Nike shoes that I really wanted were something that everybody had, and I I wanted to have a pair of shoes that everybody had, and they were really cool, and I got compliments all the time. So it's like it feels good, but it's not worth it. The hundred dollar shoes would probably be more comfortable, to be quite honest, because they're not built they're not built for comfort. They're built for style, and they hurt my feet at the end of the day. So hundred dollar <laughs> shoes would probably be even better. And it's an interesting thing that you just said, Allie. Everybody else has them. Yeah. And I bet everybody else doesn't have them, Mm -hmm. but it's the illusion that our brain takes on, right? That's Mm -hmm. a little bit of what David and Sarah show a little bit too, is Mm -hmm. we think it's normal to have debt. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. is it really? No, not at all. And people people prepare for it almost. They go into life thinking that they're going to be stuck in debt forever with student loans and school and even just purchases like a car or a TV. Don't pay a cent. But you are paying a cent. It's just (laughs) it's spread out for longer. It's spread out for a longer period of time. And like the way that I see it is you can't be spending money if you're in debt because you're just finding yourself further into debt. And I don't think many people, I know there are some people that think like that, but I don't think many people do because they don't realize it. If they have a $10,000 car, they're still paying off. Those $3 coffees are still adding to it. And you can't really, you're basically in the negatives when trying to, when you're trying to um, pay that off. You and, are in the negative. Yeah. Not basically. You are. Allie, you're right. Yeah. Call it like it is. Mm-hmm. People will take it out of Allie's mouth better they're going to take it out of mine. <laughs> so I am so thrilled that she's sharing this with you because- Her sensitivity, her um, genuineness is really sending the message that we are. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. stealing from our future. Exactly. For something that won't be there when we get into the future. Mm -hmm. That's what you were sharing yeah, with me, exactly. right? Like that mm -hmm. coffee not going to be there. No, it's not. You're going to drink it. It's not even going to be there in 20 minutes. It's going to be gone. And you're still going to be in debt. Now you're going to be $10,003 in debt, right? Like that's the way that I see it. And I think that it's, it's really helpful to learn stuff like that. I wouldn't have thought of anything like that if it wasn't for the book. I was able to take a lot from it. And I think reading it again is going gonna, is gonna to benefit me a lot. I love it. Mm -hmm. Like reading it again. Like yes. those, that's music to my ears. And I know you're yeah. part way through it already. Yeah. You've been working on it the last three or four days. Yeah. And that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And one thing you've talked about is the habits mm -hmm. that you're making today. Yes. Will take you how long? How how many years will those habits benefit you? Oh, forever. As long as I'm alive. Being able to um, create a cushion for emergencies is something that I, I think I'll be able to carry along until I'm dead. Um, and even if I don't use the money in my cushion, it'll just go to somebody else. But I think as I go, as I get older, that 1000 will turn into 3000 and 5000. And then if my car breaks, I'll be able to fix it and I won't have to stress about money. And I think it's, it's really exciting to know this stuff already and, um, know that I have, I'm prepared and I'm not about to be in debt and I'm not, I'm not preparing for it. I'm not okay with it. So I'm not going to let myself get into a situation like that. Wow. Yeah. So I love what Allie's saying here is she, she alluded to that it, right now she set her cushion at a thousand when she has expenses. Cause right now she lives at home. She goes to high school. She has a part-time mm -hmm. job. She's a hard worker. So really a cushion would be maybe savings for spending at this point. But mm -hmm. if she always keeps that thousand minimum there, and then as she gets older, she goes, oh, well, now I need it to be 3000 because I have some expenses yeah. or I need it to be 5000 because she's developed the habit today. That mm -hmm. habit will simply be increased in the amount of money that the habit yeah. is, but it won't change the habit. Mm -hmm. um, I've often heard it said that people change when they have money. Yeah. I say not true. Mm -hmm. I say the evidence of what's going on for them. Yeah. It, it gets amplified. Mm -hmm. But if exactly. you already have the habit today mm -hmm. of a thousand, it'll just get amplified when you're earning more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thrilled yeah, that exciting. that's the setup that you have, right? Mm -hmm. So even if it doesn't apply to you today, mm -hmm. maybe I'm suggesting, and so is Allie, mm -hmm. maybe it does apply to you today. Yeah. Right. I yeah, for sure. And I think even if it like doesn't necessarily apply to the money I have right now, it's a skill that I'm learning, and I'll be able to apply when I'm older. Right. It's and it's not necessarily you don't learn things for them to be used right away. I anyway for me, I'm not learning how to ride a bike to know how to ride a bike that day or something. It's so I learn that skill and I'm able to um, know how to ride a bike in the future. And I'm no, I know I could say that I know how to ride a bike and, and it takes you into the future. Exactly. And right. I know how to manage my money. I may not need to manage it entirely right now, but I have that skill that's beginning to develop. And I think it's, it's great and it's exciting and I love it. What do you yeah. want every teenager to know that says, I don't read either. I don't like bad writing. I think give it a chance and be open to, um, be open to things, be able to, um, Take a chance. I, I don't like reading, but I was able to read this book and I think I really learned something and I was able to. Uh, okay, be like Allie. Yeah. Bottom line here is we're going to say be like Allie. <laughs> so we are honored to be your advocates where we wisely get to build wealth through real estate and life exponential together. Moving forward with the